good morning. Uh, welcome to worship at Fairview Presbyterian Church. I'm the pastor here, the Reverend Emily Zyg Lindsay. It is good to be together this morning. Uh, a couple of quick announcements about some things going on. Uh, while you listen, if you would grab the pew pads at the center aisle of the pews and sign in and pass them on down, we would appreciate that. Uh, first of all, a huge, big thank you to Don and Sid and Betsy for organizing the rummage sale and for everyone who donated and came out and helped during the week. Um, our total was $3,250.50. So a wonderful rummage sale. Uh, Sunday school classes started back up this morning. If you missed it, it is not too late to join a class. We have classes from preschool all the way up to adults. Uh, there is an insert in your bulletin that highlights the work of the Synod. Uh, we belong to the Synod of the Trinity, which is just a regional gathering of Presbyterian churches. It covers the Presbyterian churches in Pennsylvania and West Virginia, as well as a little corner of Ohio. Um, as a larger community of churches, there's stuff that we can do together to make a bigger impact. Um, one of those things is donating for relief in Ukraine, which we participated in. So there's some updates on that, as well as just a little bit more information about what it means for us to be a part of this kind of larger regional group. So that is in your bulletin today, uh, as well as announcements about lots of other stuff going on at the church. So be sure to check those out. Uh, and now, as God's beloved community, let us stand and greet one another this morning. As you find your way back to your seats, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we pause for the ringing of the bell and then to listen to a prelude by Joan.
Would you please stand as you're able for the call to worship? We gather together as God's people at Fairview Presbyterian Church. We believe that we are called to incarnate the love of God by following the teachings and example of Jesus Christ. We live out our mission in many ways. We are a community for each other. We offer love and tangible items to our community. Because we value community. Our opening hymn is number 108, Come Christians Join to Sing. Let us join our voices together in song. This is what God hopes for us, that we will confess the mistakes we make so we might be forgiven. Confident of God's grace, let us confess our sins together. Would you please join me in the unison prayer of confession? <coughs> Loving God, you created all things to work together in your kingdom. You call us to live as one body one community. We confess we often prefer to go our own way. We pursue our own individual success, and we miss the chance to celebrate your gift of community. Forgive us, God. Open our ears to hear you speaking, and our hearts to embrace your purpose. Amen. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. In the name of Christ, I declare that your story is known, your sin is forgiven, and your life is made new. Let us welcome the children forward this morning by singing Where Children Belong.
Good morning. I have our picnic blanket here. And I wonder if I might have one volunteer who's willing to sit on top of the picnic blanket. Hmm, how about Ava? All right, I just need you to come and sit right in the middle of the picnic blanket. That's all you have to do. All right, I need one volunteer. How about Emerson? To come and pick a corner up right here. Grab on right there. And kind of tug and see how far you can move, Ava. A little bit. Okay, what if, we'll pause for a second. What if Lily comes and takes a corner and Evie comes and takes a corner? And you try and move toward the pews. Hey, it's easier with more people working together. Awesome. Okay, you girls can drop the corners, and Ava can go sit back down, and you guys can go sit back down. Great job. So it took a little bit of work when just one person was tugging on a corner, but when three people did it and they worked together, it was easier. It's easier sometimes when we help each other out and we work together. So our Bible story today is about a man who was paralyzed. And so that just means he couldn't use his arms and his legs. And so he couldn't walk around to get to different places. So he would have to lie down on a mat. And he heard that Jesus was coming to his town. And even though he couldn't walk to see Jesus, he still wanted to see Jesus. And so there were four friends who each held a corner of a mat and took him to the house where Jesus was, so he could see Jesus too. But when they got there, there were so many people trying to crowd into the house, he couldn't see Jesus. Because if you're on a mat and your friends set you down, what can you see? Nothing really, because you're way down here low to the ground, and there's tons of people all around you standing trying to, to see Jesus. Yeah, if you were laying down like that, you wouldn't be able to see Jesus if there was a big crowd. You might try to look like you're trying. Yeah, and it'd be really hard to see. So one of his friends had an idea. He thought if we get up on top of the roof and dig a hole through the roof, we could probably lower this man through the roof so he could see Jesus. Pretty interesting idea, yeah. And so they went up there and they dug the hole and they lowered him down so he could see Jesus. But it took a group to do it. Okay, I need six people. Let me see. Uh, one, come stand up here. Two, three, four, and Luke and Emerson. Five, six. You guys are going to have a part two. I promise. Everyone's going to have a part. And I need you to hold out your hands and make a the hole in the roof. So you're going to hold out hands kind of this way, and we're going to hold hands this way. They're making the hole that's in the roof. Can you grab Luke's hand? There you go, honey. Okay. All right, and connect right here. All right, so that's kind of the hole that was in the roof, okay? Yeah, I'm going to use your blankie, and then we're going to bring it back home, okay? And then there was a mat. So I need just you, here, it can be just you. If we have Jesus, <laughs> or the man who's paralyzed, looks kind of like Aladdin. Aladdin. It is Aladdin, yeah, that's what we have in our house. Okay, hold one corner. Okay, so if we try and put the man who's paralyzed on here, he falls off because only one person's holding it. What? You, the mat is so big and so heavy you can only hold one corner, but that was very good problem solving. Okay, what if you come and hold this corner? Only hold one corner. Okay, what if we tried to put him on there? A slide. It looks like a slide. He's still falling down. But what if we have the last two people come and hold a corner? And we try and put the man who's paralyzed on there. He stays. And then do you think you can lift him up? Walk him over? 
gently. He went through the hole in the roof to see Jesus. We don't have someone who's pretending to be Jesus right now. Awesome. Can you guys all go sit down? What great teamwork. See, when only one corner of the blanket was picked up, the man who was paralyzed slid right off. And even when we had just two corners that were picked up, he was still sliding right off. But when there were four people who worked together and each picked up a corner, he was stayed flat, and we were able to take him and put him through the roof. Because all those friends of the man worked together. And so the story in the Bible reminds us that we need to work together. Sometimes it's not enough just to have one person who's helping, or two people who's helping, but three or four people could do it, or even all 10 of you working together could pretend to be part of this story. Okay, do we think we can work together? Yeah. Awesome. All right, can we say a prayer together? Fold your hands, okay, and repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for giving us our church and our friends that we can work together with. Amen. All right, today, Miss Teresa and Miss Carol are doing junior church. Let us pray. 
holy and merciful God. We have come to hear your word. Open our ears that we may hear the good news. Open our hands that we may be led in your will. Open our hearts and lives that they might be shaped by you. It is in Christ's name that I pray. Amen. Our first scripture reading this morning is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. You saw some of it acted out this morning, but let's listen to the whole story now from the word of the Lord. When Jesus returned to Capernaum after some days, it was reported that he was at home. So many gathered around that there was no longer room for them, not even in front of the door, and he was speaking the word to them. Then some people came bringing to him a paralyzed man, carried by four of them. And when they could not bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him, and after having dug through it, they let down the mat on which the paralytic lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, child, Your sins are forgiven. Now, some of the scribes were sitting there, questioning in their hearts, why does this fellow speak in this way? It is blasphemy. Who can forgive sins but God alone? At once, Jesus perceived in his spirit that they were discussing these questions among themselves. And he said to them, why do you raise such questions in your hearts? Which is easier, to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say, stand up and take your mat and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, Jesus said to the paralytic, I say to you, stand up, take your mat, and go home. And he stood up and immediately took his mat and went out before all of them, so that they were all amazed and glorifying God, saying, we have never seen anything like this. Our second scripture reading this morning is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 14, verses 16 through 24. Listen again for the word of the Lord. Then Jesus said to him, someone gave a great dinner and invited many, And at the time of the dinner, he sent his slave to say to those who had been invited, come, for everything is now ready. And they all alike began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a piece of land and I must go see it. Please accept my regrets. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I am going to try them out. Please accept my regrets. And another said, I have just been married, and therefore I cannot come. So the slave returned and reported this to his master. And then the owner of the house became angry and said to his slave, Go out at once into the streets and the lanes of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, the lame. And the slave said, Sir, what you have ordered has been done, and there is still room. Then the master said to the slave, go out into the roads in the lanes and compel people to come in so that my house may be filled. For I tell you, none of those who were invited will taste my dinner. This is the word of God for the people of God. Disney just announced all of their upcoming projects earlier this month. Among them are films to be released in the next two years, including Peter Pan and Wendy, The Little Mermaid live action adaptation, Mufasa, The Lion King, and Inside Out 2. The original Inside Out cartoon movie came out in 2015 and follows 11-year-old Riley as she moves to a new city. In the movie, we meet her emotions, 
sadness, joy, fear, disgust, and anger. You can see them pictured there. And Riley's emotions live in headquarters, the control center inside Riley's mind. And so you can see them in her mind at the control center, ready to help her figure out what emotions she should be feeling as she lives her life. They help advise her throughout her everyday life. And so fear keeps her safe when she's running around and jumping and playing. And sadness comes out when her favorite stuffed animal was torn apart. And disgust makes an appearance when Riley first tastes broccoli. Also in headquarters, in Riley's mind, are Riley's memories. These glowing orbs that contain snippets of events. Like the first time when Riley went down a slide. It's hard to see, but that one's yellow because that memory is covered with joy and happiness. Or the memory of when she shared a special moment with her parents. And that memory is kind of covered in blue because she was feeling down about something and her parents came and sat next to her. So that memory is tinged with sadness. Every night, the memories from that day are sent to long-term memory, except for the really important ones. Those become core memories. Core memories are from super important times in Riley's life, and they remain in headquarters. Core memories power Riley's personality and are part of what makes Riley, Riley. They are essential to who she is. And throughout the movie, you see how they play a part in her life. Last week, I introduced our core values. Session spent time this past spring discerning that love, community, and service are our core values here at Fairview Presbyterian Church. Like Riley's core memories, our core values are part of what makes us, us. They are essential to who we are and what we do. Last Sunday, I preached about love, and today we'll explore community. A session brainstormed ways that our current ministries fit these three core values. Community was the one that had the longest list of behaviors that support that value. There were ways that we reach out to the community around us, like through the food pantry every month, handing out thousands of pounds of food to those in our community in need, like the clothes closet, which the youth group renamed this year the community clothes closet to emphasize it's for those in our community who need clothes. Like the community festival, where we welcome the community to our church for an afternoon of having fun and learning more about who we are and what we do. Like the collection of socks that we have taken up during winter months, distributed to homeless shelters, and the collections of hats and gloves and scarves that we've distributed to women and children. A vital part of who we are as a church is an organization that strives to meet the needs of the community around us. We're also a church that values spending time in community with one another. The Soul Sisters Women's Group has deepened friendships and relationships between the women of the group over the past few years. The men's group has brought the men of the church together in a new way as their group launched earlier this year. Both of our youth groups are about being a community, a community of fun and service, if you're part of the middle school youth group, a community for deep discussion that welcomes questions in the high school youth group. We've also partnered with local churches for various things, including Gerard Presbyterian Church and Church of the Cross and St. Stephen's Episcopal Church, all coming together for youth group, St. Stephen's Church for Vacation Bible School, St. Stephen's and Holy Cross Catholic Church for food pantry drives. As a community of local churches, 
we have enhanced our mission and our ministries by working together. The men in our scripture reading worked together as part of the community that loved and cared for their friend who was paralyzed. They had all heard that Jesus was in town. Jesus, the one known to heal folks. But the paralyzed man could not make it to see this Jesus on his own. But his community showed up for him and literally lifted him up to take him to see Jesus. Getting there was only part of the problem for the man who was paralyzed. Once they were at the home where Jesus was teaching, they couldn't get anywhere near him. The crowd that had gathered was just too big and too dense, and no one parted ways for them to get close, not even for a man who was paralyzed on a mat. But this man's community, his neighbors or friends or relatives, didn't give up so easily. They were determined that this man would meet Jesus and maybe even be healed. And so one of them has the brilliant idea to remove the roof of the house. The roof would have been made of mud and thatch, and it would have taken some work to remove it, but it was doable. And so they remove a section of the roof, and they lower the paralyzed man down to Jesus on a mat. And Jesus' first reaction is to notice their faith. And so you might have missed that nuance in the scripture reading, but it says when Jesus saw their faith, not the faith of the man, not his faith, but their faith, the faith of the group, those four friends, the man's community that came together and went to great strides for him to be able to see Jesus. Our second scripture reading is also about community. But whereas the first one was about the community already surrounding the man who was paralyzed, the second scripture reading was about reaching out to the community. When Jesus tells the parable of the great dinner, he's showing what it means to serve those around you. A man had planned a great dinner and invited many, but his guests all had excuses and couldn't come. I think they're pretty lame excuses, if you ask me. I just bought some new land, and I need to go out and look at it, like right now when your dinner is happening. Like the land's not going to be there in a couple hours or tomorrow. I just bought some oxen, and I need to go and try them out. Again, like the oxen couldn't wait a couple hours or even tomorrow for him to walk them through the field. I'm newly married. Well, uh, I don't know. I don't want to get in the middle of what that might be and why they can't come to the party. So the host orders those in town to be invited. Whoever is around, the poor, the crippled, the blind, the lame, anyone who wants to attend a great dinner. The host shifted from doing something for his friends the ones who got the initial invitations, to serving those who would never have been invited to such a grand dinner, part of the community around him that was often overlooked. Our list of community activities focuses both directions as well. Inward, building up the community of folks in the church as we love and support one another I love that on the car ride here, when I said, Daddy's not going to be in church with us this morning, so you need to find someone to sit with, that my girls could name a whole list of folks that they would be comfortable sitting with in church while Mommy was up front being the pastor. So our community activities focus inward on building up this community. And they also focus outward as we strive to serve our community, our neighbors, and their needs. And already you can see that the three values are starting to get intertwined with each other. It's hard for me to talk about community without talking about loving our neighbors or serving our neighbors. It's hard for me to talk about our community without talking about the ways we love and serve each other. 
all of them, love, community, and service together define who we are. They are our core values together. In the movie Inside Out, Riley's emotions come to realize that her memories can also be intertwined. A memory not just being defined by a single emotion, but by more than one emotion, perhaps by joy and sadness. Sadness that Riley's hockey team lost a game, but joy that her parents were there to love and support her at the game and hug her when she was disappointed at the end. And so some of Riley's core memories start to become multiple colors as she realizes the way they work with each other. So too, the things we do as a church are intertwined with love and community and service. They are the very core of who we are as we strive to be disciples of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our hymn of response is number 282, The Family of God. We're going to sing through it two times. Let us stand and join our voices together in song. You may be seated. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for this new day, for the morning sun that rises in hope, for a hot cup of coffee, for the chance to spend it with loved ones and friends. Thank you, God, for the purpose and meaning of our lives for your call to serve and love our neighbors and be part of our community, for the knowledge that we can make a difference through a smile, a gesture, a gift of time, and our offering. Thank you, God, for moments of pause that frame our lives with spiritual meaning, for this time on Sundays to worship together, for morning meditations or evening devotions. Thank you, God, even for the problems and pain. Injustices frustrate and overwhelm, but also call us to collective action and inspire us to right what is wrong. Melt our hearts with compassion, God, for all those in need of your saving grace and your liberating love. Mold us as your hands and feet of action Make us the answers to our prayers. Finally, hear us, God of mercy, as we lift our heartfelt prayers to you and pray for those joys and concerns of our community. For those who are sick, including Linda, Fred, and Danny. For those who mourn, including Edie's friend and the family and friends of Tom. For safe travels, for those who are traveling, 
and for those who celebrate. Four years of ministry together, fun and service in the middle school youth group, and the birth of a new child. United as a community of faith and as the body of Christ, we lift these prayers up to you. We ask all these things in the name of Christ, the one who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. All that we are points back to our creator and all that we have is held in gift and trust from God. God will finish what God has lovingly begun, and we have the privilege of being a part of it through our service to our community and through our offering. Last week, we put out a call for help with the rummage sale, particularly on Monday morning, when all the donations that had already been received needed to be brought in from the garage, and you showed up. Tons of help showed up on Monday morning especially, but also throughout the week. Help showed up so we could have a successful rummage sale and raise over $3,000. Love grows here because we are a community that shows up.
Let us pray. God, you have blessed each of us with gifts to serve and share and be part of our community. May the offerings we present today remind us that we work together. We each give some, so together as a community, we can work to share your love with the world. Amen. Our closing song is number 10 in the White Songbook, Bind Us Together. Let us join our voices together in song. We are bound together by love. We are bound together by love to be a community with and for each other and reaching out to our neighbors. And now may the God who loves you take delight in your living. May the God who seeks you find you when you fall. And may the God who sends you send you now with great joy. For the very one who created you and redeemed you goes with you still. Amen. Amen. We've got some joy right here with that music. Oh, thank you so much for joining us in worship today.